Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the, uh, the board meeting on Thursday, May 4th. Uh, Mr. Philo, could you call the roll, please? Ms. Landon. Yes, here. Mrs. Malad. <laughs> here. Mr. Steininger. Here. Mr. McCourt. Yes, here. Mr. Browning. Here. Uh, could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So next on the agenda is to approve the agenda as amended per what Mr. Philo said. If I could get a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Mr. Philo. Mrs. Malad. Yes. Mr. Steininger. Yay. Ms. Landon. Yes. Mr. McCourt. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. Uh, next is to approve the minutes of the uh, Thursday, April 6th regular meeting and the uh, Monday, April 10th special meeting. Again, if I could get a motion and so a moved. second. Second. Thank you, Mr. Philo. Mr. McCourt. Yes. Mrs. Milan. Yes. Ms. Landon. Yes. Mr. Steininger. Yay. Mr. Browning. Yes. Uh, next is the board reports and goody order. Wendy, would you like to start? Sure. Uh, we'd like to say congratulations to our Hall of Honor inductees, class of 2023. Uh, Stephen B. Edwards, Edward Gibbons, Linda Riney, Hasley, Sean Kelly, Wendy Williams Kirsch, Glenn Oakley, Colonel Roger Thornberry. Thank you to the, the selection and the induction committees and to all who helped make this a memorable, <clears throat> a memorable experience for the inductees. And I'd also like to say uh, congratulations to our students and staff of the quarter. Um, it's a great honor to be able uh, to be part of that night, and um, I would like to say congratulations again. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, Fairborn Intermediate held its first informational meeting for watchdogs that DOGS is dads of great students. Um, looks like it says tonight, but I'm sure it wasn't tonight. Thank you to all of the fathers, grandfathers, uncles, big brothers, and all of the important men in our kids' lives for coming. Um, Fairborn Intermediate had over 90 adults and over 100 students participate, so that's a pretty great program. Um, Fairborn Primary School held Culture Night 2023 with celebrity readers, including Superintendent Jean Lawley and uh, Director of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Sue Breckenhoff. Students and families had the opportunity to learn about different cultures through dance, food, and activities, and we'd like to congratulate uh, Fairborn Primary School for that. Um, I also this past weekend got to attend Greene County's third annual anti-racism symposium. This year's event focused on issues facing black and brown families and housing and it was a very informative event to attend. I'd like to um, also send out a congratulations to Karen Garetta for um, such a great final choir concert on April 26th. It was really wonderful to see all of the seniors get to share their talent prior to the show. Um, and finally, uh, the final band concert for Fairborn High School is um, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. If you don't have tickets yet, you can get those online. Um, so we highly encourage people to come out for that. And lastly, graduating class of 23, enjoy your last two weeks. <laughs> There's not a lot of time left and we wanna wish you well. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all um, to hand you your diplomas in a couple weeks. So, thank you. Okay, Pat? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to say I uh, attended a concert last night, which uh, I tell you, when, when you talk about the, our talented kids, not only on the athletic field, but in the music side of this thing, uh, we heard some seventh graders last night, uh, both in a jazz group and a concert group that, uh, just blew me away. I mean, you think of seventh graders and, and the first time at a concert like this, and, and this is the first jazz band that the seventh grade has had in a long, long time. Uh, but, and uh, I'm not a big connoisseur of music, but uh, uh, from what I heard and what I saw, nice, sharp sounds, uh, very, um, 
you know, attentive to the director, and uh, they just did a wonderful job. So uh, congratulations to them, and as well, we got a chance to hear the high school uh, jazz band, uh, Mr. Greta and Mrs. Greta. They always do a gr great job. So thanks to the, all those kids there. Um, the Skyhawk boys track team had its best finish of the season at the Monroe Invitational finish, finishing fifth out of 14 teams. The day started out with a four by 800 relay team finishing first with a new school record time of 8.5682. The team uh, of Luke Kinneman, Matthew Wardle, David Oster, is that Ostras, Ost uh, yeah. Oscracy, I, I guess it is. Uh, Dominic Bushelman uh, was the highest placers of the day. Michael Wardle finished second uh, in the high jump with a jump of six foot two. The four by 100 and four by 200 relay teams established personal records with the best times of the season. So uh, uh, congratulations to all the athletes and the coaches uh, for a, uh, a great <coughs> Great job out there on the track team. Thank you. Yes, I'd like to thank the uh, Fairborn High School. would like to reach out and thank uh, Mr. Uh, Jamie Hemsley and the Fairborn Rotary Club for their sponsoring our students to attend the RYLA, which stands for the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. It's uh, an intensive leadership experience uh, organized by Rotary Clubs in our area and allows them, the students uh, to develop their skills and le as leaders and having fun at the same time. Our students met from, from other people from around the district, and I know they made friendships at that time. And our students will also be a valuable resource to our own school and into the community as they go forward. Uh, the attendees were uh, Caitlin Cotts, Marina Kelly, Allison Meter, and Bella Jabs. Japs. Japs. Yep, yep. Japs. We'd like to thank these students for their participation and helping out Fairborn. Thank you. Okay, the first thing is uh, the high school had their top scholar uh, breakfast the other day, and it recognizes all of the top scholars of each of the classes, and uh, really would like to congratulate those students and uh, you know, ask them to keep up the great work. And if you go to the website, there's going to be the detail of the student's name by class and everything on the uh, school webpage. Uh, the, the second thing is around uh, the music department. You know, Pat mentioned the, uh, the concert last night, and. Mr. Greta said that he had been wanting to start a middle school jazz band for a long time, and the assistant band director, Katie Welch, grabbed a hold of that and put the jazz band together, and uh, they did a great job, both middle school and high school. And the other thing that was neat in there was there's high school students in the jazz band that are mentoring the middle school students. So it's really neat to see them go down and do that type of mentoring. Um, and talking about jazz band, Jazz Fest, which is a big event for the music club is uh, a week from Friday. So it's the 12th uh, here and you need to email uh, Mr. Greta for tickets, but it's a meal and getting to hear the jazz band and they have vocalists and one of the vocalists is sitting back there with the seniors. She did a great job singing last night, by the way. Um, um, but it's a neat event if anybody can go to that. And then the, the last thing is uh, I've got a chance to walk through the new high school on Wednesday. And it's, it's really interesting looking at the, at the change that happens week to week in that building and uh, how far they're coming along and, and they're still on track. And I think, is there an update on the construction today? Uh, not but, not uh, tonight. Okay, not tonight. But uh, it's just it's, the progress is phenomenal in my mind walking through that building and they're still on track. And uh, that's, that's really nice to see. So that's it. So next is recognition of visitors. Mr. President, um, we have uh, two people signed up. First is uh, Corey Vickers from Fairborn. Corey, if you want to come up here and talk into the microphone. Comments are limited to five minutes. Um, hi, um, sorry about my voice. Prom was so much fun on um, <laughs> Saturday that I lost my voice. So, um, my first thing is, sorry. Okay, um, my name is Corey Vickers. Um, my pronouns are they, them. I'm a senior at Fairborn High School. Mm -hmm. All of you have met me. Um, I am a drum major in, well, was a drum major in marching band. Right. 
Um, the music club is like my second family, my second home. And so I love, I play clarinet and I love it. And tomorrow's my last concert, which is super sad, but it's also, it's like watching all of my peers and I grow up through music has been astounding. Um, I, like I said, my pronouns are they, them. I identify as queer. Um, and um, two months ago, um, Mr. Greta, I always ask him for scores beforehand because I always love to know what we're playing. He's like, I can't tell you before everybody else. So when he told everybody that we were going to play a song um, titled A Mother of a Revolution um, by Omar Thomas, I was astounded. It is a beautiful piece. It is. Um, it would have been the hardest thing I've ever played on my instrument. Um, truly intellectually challenging, like crazy rhythms, crazy notes, like stuff I've never even played. Um, I was looking so forward to it. And I was like, all spring break, I was like, I'm so excited. I'd already practiced it. And don't tell him this, but I don't practice. <laughs> so I was so excited. Um, and then I found out that I was not going to be able to play this piece. Um, and this piece, um, A Mother of a Revolution, is about Marsha P. Um, Johnson, um, who was a trans woman. Um, the P stands for pay it no mind. Um, she gave herself that name. Um, to just represent that, pay it no mind. It doesn't matter that I'm trans, I'm still human, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so over my course of, um, I guess, seven years of playing my instrument, I have played music from different backgrounds, different cultures, different ethnicities, um, religions, and so many different groups. I've played songs that have pushed me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Um, and not just in a, like a, oh, here's the meaning of the piece, but also, like, it is one thing to play something that is really challenging um, in a musical standpoint, but it also pushes you as a person to persevere. This is really hard, but I know I can do it, right? It's more than just the music. It is growing as an individual human to know that I can overcome challenges and obstacles, right? Um, sophomore year, we played a song called um, An American Elegy by Frank Ticelli. Um, in the footnotes, it says, quote, composed in memory of those who lost their lives at Columbine High School and to honor the survivors, end quote. I was able to play a piece about those high school students, just like me, who lost their lives brutally and tragically. But I can't play a song about the lovely life of Marcia P. Johnson. Last year, we played a song called Me Kong by Robert W. Smith. We not only played this in a concert, but we also played this in front of the um, intermediate fifth graders um, as our recruitment, and they loved it. It is an incredible piece, and it was really challenging to play also. Um, and um, Mekong is a river that flows in Vietnam. Um, it was known as the heartbeat of the Vietnam War. Um, there were five bass drums in the auditorium that were instructed to play as loud as possible and sound like sporadic bombs. And they, they did a good job. Um, there was a warning at the beginning of the piece um, that if you had trouble with loud sounds and stuff to leave, um, and we would respectfully honor that. Um, but I can play a song about the Vietnam War, but I can't play a song to honor the life of an individual. Um, this past year, um, just in March, and we also played it um, with a combined um, wind group with the Sinclair Wind Ensemble. Um, we played a song called They Shall Run and Be Free by Brant Carrick. Um, in the footnotes, it says, quote, portrays a daring and perilous slave escape, end quote. There is a slapstick part in the percussion section that is made to sound like a whip cracking a slave's back. Um, Brant Carrick is a black composer who wrote this to honor the life of his heritage. Um, there's a Negro spiritual called O Freedom in this piece. It says, O Freedom, O Freedom, O Freedom over me, and before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. O Freedom, right? Right here, it says the word censorship. When censorship occurs, my creative and diver divergent thinking as a musician is taken away. And that's really hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you, Corey. <coughs> uh, next up, we have Mr. John Pace of Fairborn. Good evening, Superintendent Lawley and board. I appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening. Um, I do commend the student that shared, you know, her concerns and convictions their to the school concerns. board. Pardon me? If their concerns are, their, they, them, are they burnout? Sorry, missed that. On the 21st of March, and, and, I, and you had a lot of announcements in reference to um, basically uh, the music program, and I, I echo those. Mm -hmm. Great, great music program we have here. Um, you know, the students in band, their parents, I would consider as friends. So really my comments tonight are just to give some facts mm -hmm. and maybe a different perspective on the issues. It's not to, to go against um, the this, this student's message. So on March 21st, Mr. Greta introduced a band piece titled A Mother of a Revolution, which is described as a piece celebrating the bravery of transgenders, and in particular, Marsha Johnson. Marsha is credited with being one of those instigators of the famous Stonewall Uprising in 1969 which is described as a pivotal event of the LGBTQ movement where many violent protests and injuries occurred. So after gaining knowledge of the piece that Mr. Greta introduced, my wife and I reached out to him via email, sharing our Christian beliefs and requested that he either consider a different piece or dismiss our children from participating in the song. We felt this was a respectful request with two simple solutions. There were no demands simply a request to change music or excuse our kids without any ramifications. When some students expressed their concerns to the band director about playing the piece, Mr. Coretta suggested that if they didn't participate, they could receive a zero or write a 20-page paper. I view his response as possible punishment and coercion. I don't know if the other parents reached out but after Mr. Goretta spoke with the superintendent, who asked him, I believe, not to pick, to pick a different piece, Mr. Goretta addressed his entire class and expressed his disappointment in being forced to play different music. He indicated it almost ruined his spring break, he nearly quit his job over it, and that lawyers were involved. Just imagine how those statements must have stirred students in a negative and divisive manner. If Mr. Goretta had kept this a private matter between parents and staff, which he most certainly should have, this wouldn't be a contentious matter before the school board. As a Christian family with biblical worldview, we believe the Bible is the word of God, his revelation to guide how we live our lives. One key tenet of that is to show love and kindness to all people, regardless of their gender, race, ethnicity, or even a worldview. So I'm not here to attack anyone's worldview or their strongly held beliefs or their identity. Um, but as an example, you know, we're not to judge others when we love people. However, we're instructed not to participate in or celebrate things that are not aligned with our beliefs. So my wife and I, a blended family, have had six children be a part of the music program and have worked harmon harmoniously side by side with band parents and students for many years. I would describe the group as quite diverse in their interests, worldviews, and convictions, and the music program has historically done a great job of bringing those diversities together and uniting them. Any piece that distracts the music program from uniting goal should be questioned. It only takes one glance at the headlines to know that there are many controversial issues in today's society. I would hope the music program would be focused on bringing people together playing music that isn't centered on one of those divisive issues. A couple key questions for the board to consider. Why intentionally select a piece that puts our children in the midst of controversy and causes division? How does the school board ensure that students with a biblical worldview aren't ostracized or punished for not participating in a controversial song selection that goes against their biblical values? And when I say that, I mean that broadly. I, I think same consideration be, should be given to an atheist that's asked to play a song that celebrates Christ. I believe the equitable way to achieve this 
is to play pieces that don't, don't divide our children around where they stand on a controversial topic. Instead, focus on what they have in common, a love for music. This isn't about who's right or wrong. It's about remaining committed to the children without joining in on political viewpoints that cause division. There's enough of that in the world outside the school doors. I, I am not against you, <laughs> you know, I am not. Um, About 15 seconds, sir. All I ask is that our staff do a good job of handling these situations and be sensitive to the fact that not everybody thinks the same way, mm -hmm. regardless of the topic. And I, I think that's at the core of the issue. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Pace. Mr. President, that's all I have I'm signed up to public participation. Okay. Uh, let's move on to school district presentations. Mr. Lawley. Okay, first up would be uh, members from the class of 2023 to talk about the recent New York trip that they went on. Here we have the senior class officers and senior class advisor, Mrs. Zink. Thank you for having us tonight. We are here again representing the class of 2023. My name is Miley Smith and I am the Vice President. With me tonight are class officers, Secretary Jade Dodd, Treasurer Hayden Barnett, and historians Katie Ann Munger and Aaron Reichert. We have come tonight to thank you for allowing us to take our senior trip to the New York City and to give you an idea of what we experienced. As a class, we visited the Empire State Building. We were able to get a view of the entirety of New York City at night. We also toured the American Museum of Natural History, the setting of the Night in the Museum movies, and traveled by ferry to the Statue of Liberty. At the end of the first and second days, our entire group met at the Hard Rock Cafe and at Margaritaville for dinner. When not participating in whole group tours, seniors were split into smaller groups we called families. Each family designed their own travel plan to visit sites of interest to every single member. Visiting the World Trade Center Memorial, Times Square, and adventuring through Little Italy and Chinatown were some of the destinations. Families saw the Bull on Wall Street and visited St. Patrick's Cathedral and Trinity Church. Families also experienced riding through the subway, walking through Central Park, and shopping on Fifth Avenue. A highlight of the trip was attending the Broadway show. This year we saw Aladdin. This had something for everyone, a magic genie, and even a flying carpet. Our class loved it. One of the most memorable moments of our trip was the final day's family dinner following the show. Each family had a dinner of their own and enjoyed one last bonding moment to our senior trip before it ended. Our class had a great time in New York and learned a lot. This trip has given us the opportunity to travel to an expansive and diverse city to see what other cultures are like. The annual senior class trip gives many students who would not have had the chance to travel the opportunity to do so. Over 30,000 candy bars were sold by seniors to help fund their trip. We would also have never been able to go on the senior trip without our amazing chaperones. Some experiencing their first year as a chaperone and others over 12 years, including Assistant Superintendent Amy Gayhart. <laughs> We want to thank all of you again for allowing us to continue the Fairborn High School tradition of taking a senior trip. The memories made by the members of the class of 2023 are ones we will never forget. Please enjoy this brief slideshow of our trip.
Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Just a quick comment. Thank you for coming tonight. And, you know, it, it's a neat thing to see all the pictures and stuff from the trip every year when the seniors go. And thank you for representing Fairborn very well when you were in New York City. That makes it easier to send the next year's class. <laughs> thank you. Any other comments? No. no, no. Great no. job. Thanks for sharing, thank guys. Thank you. <laughs> That's saying something. This is one. Yep. Um I want to invite uh, Pam and Jean to come up here to also talk about the bond levy results. But in terms of in March, um, I updated the uh, Board of Education on the State of Ohio Foundation funding. Um, this current year right now is we get $16.2 million. I projected for next year about an increase of about uh, $0.4 million more, about a 2 3% increase. Um, in January, uh, Governor DeWine proposed an increase of uh, a little less than $1 million, a uh, $0.8 million increase, which was good. Um, but the House of uh, the State House Representatives uh, just released their budget and passed it um, with some pretty good news for uh, Fairborn schools. They're proposing an increase of $2.6 million. So we're a little over halfway through the budget process. Um, the state senate will now uh, debate. They will come up with their own plan. They will pass it. Then the House and the Senate need to reconcile their numbers uh, with the governor's approval, and it all has to be done by June 30th. But uh, some pretty optimistic numbers right now. So, good. Um, any questions on the foundation funding? That's big number. Yep, it's good news. So I um, want to introduce uh, uh, Gene Lally and Pam Gayhart and myself. We'll talk about the bond levy. Good evening, everyone. I uh, just want to take a moment here. Um, as you're well aware, uh, it was a great day uh, on Tuesday. Uh, we passed the bond issue, the 1.7 mil, to finish the construction of our high school. Uh, I want to thank those voters who got out and vote, whether you vote yes or vote no. I think that's what makes this country great that we live in, that you can voice your opinion. It's even greater that speakers can come here and speak their beliefs and uh, what they feel they want to express uh, again. That's why we live in no, uh, a country like no other. I would like to thank our three uh, levy co-chairs, and that's Ellen Sloan Farthing, uh, Betsy Snyder, and Jane Dorley, who headed our levy committee. So a huge thank you to them. So with the completion, uh, or with the passage of the uh, bond issue, we're able to reinstate uh, some of the uh, things that we were cutting, such as the baseball, softball fields, tennis courts, uh, band turf uh, field and the um, indoor training facility but we'll talk a little bit more about that in our uh, work session tonight so uh, with that again I uh, just want to thank those of you that got out and voted and I'm going to turn this over to Mrs. Gayhart. So I just want to reiterate what Superintendent Lolly said um, we've got a group of volunteers that work behind the scenes um, the put Fairborn Kids First has a website and social media so we were updating that and just trying to give accurate information about finishing the projects and communicating with our parents. Um, for a lot of us, um, we really want to see this project finished and finished the correct way, um, and this will allow us to do that. So I'm just super thankful for everyone who got out and voted um, that we're able to finish the project, and I'm very thankful for the volunteers who always step up and put the time in uh, to make sure that we're communicating honestly and accurately and timely. So thank you very much. In, term, in terms of the bond levy itself, we don't have a breakdown by precincts. Um, we uh, pass with a little less than 100 votes. Um, but we don't take um, for granted the support that the community has given us, uh, the, the money that they give us um, to finish this project, the trust that they have. Um, we assure you that we'll spend each and every dollar uh, wisely. And if anybody ever has any questions about how we spend our money, um, our books are open and we'll sit down and talk with anybody. But Again, it's um, uh, statewide. Uh, school levies did not fare very well this year, um, but our community stepped up and supported us, and we're very grateful for that. So, any questions from the board? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So next on the agenda is budget and finance. Uh, looking at the five-year forecast and approval, and then uh, the receipt of the uh, monthly financial report. So if we could get a motion, then we could talk about any questions. So moved. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments? Nope. Okay. Mr. Philo? Ms. Landon? Yes. Mr. Steininger? Yay. Mrs. Millad? Yes. Mr. McCourt? Yes. Mr. Browning? Yes. Uh, next is administrative reports and superintendent recommendations. Uh, this actually goes the next 11 pages. And a couple things that are in there. One is, that's the number of the pages, is the graduating class for 2023 uh, listed in there basically for approval by the board. Um, also, uh, there's a um, resolution for service for 19 years of employment for uh, Tammy Elliott, who is retiring. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to thank Tammy. Uh, for her service to the district. Good lady. Yeah. So if we go back, uh, if we could get a motion in a second, and then if there's any questions. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on any of the items? Nope. Okay. Mr. Filer? Mrs. Millad? Yes. Ms. Landon? Yes. Mr. Steininger? Yay. Mr. McCourt? Yes. Mr. Browning? Yes. And next is gifts and donations. Pat, would you want to do that? What, 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 oh, want there we go. <laughs> yeah. We gave you the best one. Uh, Fairborn City Schools Board of Education would like to gratefully acknowledge the following gifts and donation. Uh, anonymous gift of $1,000 to the Fairborn uh, Intermediate School PTO for color, run, and field day t-shirts. Uh, Kroger's, our friendly friends over there for the uh, food and uh, hygiene items for the Hawks Pantry. And our friend Fred Pomeroy, $3,000 for the Turf Field Fund. And again, thanks to each and every one of them. Right. Okay, Mr. Philo, we're going to uh, executive Pre session Mr. first. Pre Mr. President, if I could entertain a motion to go into executive, spe executive session for the specified <laughs> purposes of investigation of charges or complaints against the public employee. So moved. Give a second. Second. Mr. McCourt. Yes. Mr. Steininger. Yay. Ms. Landon. Yes. Mrs. Millad. Yes. Mr. Browning. Yes. The board will go into executive session. It should take approximately 10 to 15 minutes. We'll come out of executive session and have a work session in this room. And then probably after that work session, we'll go into a second executive session and then adjourn for the evening. So you're welcome to stay. Um, the executive session is closed to the public, except for the people that we invite in. Um, but we anticipate 10 to 15 minutes. And we will adjourn to one of the other rooms over there.